Hello, good afternoon to you all. I am Dr. Rajdeep Dev, Assistant Professor, Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management. In this particular session, we are going to discuss on human resource management in tourism and hospitality management. So, I again welcome you all. So, when you are talking about tourism and hospitality management, all of us know that tourism and hospitality management is one of the fastest and the most emergent industries in the world. It not only generates lot of employment opportunities, but at the same time, it contributes to the economy of a nation. Over the last uh, few years, if you look carefully and critically, we'll find that uh, millions of jobs have been created by this particular sector. And uh, the significance of tourism and hospitality sector uh, in both developed and developing countries is being endorsed by the World Travel and Tourism Council, that is WTTC. And as I've already mentioned, uh, this particular sector has has lot to do with the economy of a country, the national growth, and most importantly, the employment scope. But saying so, it does not mean, mean this that this particular sector is free from any kind of criticism so far as jobs are concerned. Yes, quantity-wise, jobs are unquestionable, or the kind of jobs, I mean, that the, the quantity of jobs it generates is unquestionable. But looking at this particular sector on behalf of the quality of the jobs it creates definitely it creates some concerns to the academics and uh, policy makers alike now what is this basically we are talking about that uh, uh, that, that that there is some concern about the quality of jobs because in tourism and hospitality industry if we look carefully you'll find it basically generates two kinds of jobs one is those kind of jobs which are very attractive, which have high status working environment with competitive pay, which uh, which, are, which which is full of professionalism, which has uh, very low staff turnover, which is, uh, I mean, as I've already men mentioned, high pay jobs, and most importantly, which, which, which requires more skills. This is one set of jobs which is being created by tourism and hospitality industry. On the other hand, if you talk about, there are certain jobs, I must say that these jobs are larger in numbers. Those jobs which are less attractive with the less uh, uh, low status working environment with the less pay, high staff turnover, low skill jobs and uh, most importantly this is virtually, uh, virtually there is no sense of professionalism. So these are basically the two jobs which have created some kinds of concern among the industry practitioners. So organizations and uh, managers in the travel and, and in the tourism and hospitality industry, they face real challenges in recruiting, developing and maintaining a competent, a committed, well-managed and well-motivated workforce whose focus is on uh, delivering quality service to their customers and thereby generating some kind of quality experience from their customers. So these so-called moments of truth are very important or are very significant in creating organizational effectiveness, organizational success, organization, uh, organizational competitiveness and most importantly all these things ultimately culminate to organizational profitability. So as you can see that what basically we are trying to emphasize upon, we are basically trying to emphasize upon on one most important thing that is talent workforce or quality workforce or human capital or in short we can say that human element plays a major role in the growth and development of this particular emerging sector that is tourism and hospitality sector and uh, if we look carefully we'll find that the environment around us or the ecosystem the operating ecosystem around us is really undergoing through a paradigm shift there is a changing dynamics of this industry as well as we have also seen that the globalization has already set in. So with this globalization, the HRM practices has become a reality in tourism and hospitality industry. So as I've already mentioned that uh, if you look carefully, tourism is one of the drivers of world economy in some, I mean in short we can conclude that. This, this is the driver which is creating lots of uh, ripples across the country in terms of its uh, contribution. So let me just share some of the data. 
With over 13 million jobs generated, India needs skilled people in tourism. That shows that yes, tourism is a stimulant of economic and employment creation. But there is a question. That means 13 million jobs will be generated or 30 million jobs already generated but still we have lack in skilled manpower. That means the term which I just said few minutes, few seconds ago. That means we are talking about quality workforce. We are talking about talented or uh, robust talent management strategy so that these jobs can be filled in. And as I've already mentioned you that uh, in tourism that these two kind of sets that is we have talked about one that is low skill jobs and one is high skill jobs big question is this who are filling those vacancies and what kind of jobs are being produced in tourism no doubt tourism is an hospital industry is producing millions of jobs but we still lack skilled people and this gets endorsed by this particular data which says that the gap will be seven, nearly 8 lakhs in non managerial level and 1.9 lakh in managerial cadre by 2021 in tourism and hospitality sector as per the data shared by the Ministry of Tourism. This shows a big knowledge gap. This shows that we have a lot to cover in terms of skill, in terms of talent. So there comes the importance of human resource management. There comes the a sense that we have to create a pool of uh, human resource or a pool of manpower who can really come in big numbers and can fill this particular gap and uh, if we have to uh, concentrate on hospitality sector we'll find this in the case of hospitality sector the quality of uh, customer services and staff responsiveness has got a direct impact on the image and uh, reputation of the hotel and uh, this particular uh, customer centric approach will create the bottom line of the organization and uh, if we if, if we see what is basically HRM so this particular uh, section we all know that is human resource management so what is basically human resource we know why exactly we call humans as resources because these humans or the employees they come with various knowledge experiences network relationships that's why human are basically considered as resources so human resource management has been described as the strategic approach to the management of manpower and organization's most valuable asset no organization can run without this biggest asset that is human resources we have many other resources but organizations they basically or they usually give more importance to this critical resource that is our manpower human resource management is most crucial in the service sector including the hospitality and tourism sector because of the labor intensive nature now, why exactly we consider human resource to be the most crucial resource in, hum, uh, in tourism and hospitality industry? Because human, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, tourism and hospitality industry, it comes under service sector. And service sector is basically a labor intensive sector. So in this particular sector, it is the human resource. It is the manpower which will deliver service to the ultimate customers. That's why human resource management is most significant and considerable in the uh, travel and the, in the tourism and hospitality sector now going back to the HR practices what are the different types of HR practices we can talk about uh, if we go by the Redman and Matthews in 1998 how to achieve high quality services he has mentioned some of the processes so first thing he has emphasized on is recruitment and selection so what is basically recruitment and what is selection now recruitment and selection they are the most important hrm functions or rather one of the most important hrm functions recruitment is the process of identifying the sources of manpower and motivating the people to apply for the vacancies within the firm this recruitment and selection basically helps the firm in choosing the right candidate for the job and at the same time rejecting those who do not fit to the job description Selection basically starts just after the recruitment. In, ca in, in case of selection, we basically define it by saying that it is a process of evaluation of the manpower through various means and then making a decision or choice which is followed by an employment offer. So recruitment and selection, it is the first stage through which 
we get to do the manpower or what kind of manpower we'll be dealing with or we'll be working with. In the next step, we talk about retention. This is a particular uh, issue which has been or which is being faced by most of the organizations today. That is employee turnover. Organization, many of the organizations that try their level best to retain the staff, but the problem is this, in many cases they are unable to retain the staff. And once you lose a competent employee, this is a big loss for the organization because a competitive and a competent employee can contribute in millions to the organizations. So organizations, especially the uh, tourism and hospitality industry, as I've already mentioned that this particular industry is dependent on its manpower. So this particular industry has to find out some ways to avoid any kind of employee turnover or this turnover culture. So what they should do? Many organizations, if we go through, they are uh, adopting different innovative ways. Some of the ways might be uh, retention bonuses which can be offered to the employees or exit interviews which is being followed by many organizations today. Any employee or any skilled employee when he or she wants to leave the organization, the HR manager always tries to conduct an interview and tries to know what are the reasons or what are the uh, what are the factors which making that particular employee to leave the organizations and if possible they try to retain that particular employee because that shows the importance of human capital in an organization next is teamwork this is one of the most important characteristics of management that is working in a group in management we have seen that management is uh, not about individual uh, efforts it is always about collective efforts so in teamwork the operative level staff should be equipped with team working and uh, interpersonal skills so that they can handle the situations in a better way and also the, uh, the the higher staff should be should be taught about how to how to inculcate innovative ways of managing the employees new ways of leadership style so that every employee in the organization they can feel at home they can feel that they are working as a team they are working in a group and this will definitely contribute a lot to the attainment of organizational goals because in an organization the individual and collective ability of the employees can do a lot in achieving the organizational goals number th four training and development so definitely training is that particular tool which can help the organizations to improve the skills of the organization that's why today most of the organizations after selection of their or after choosing the manpower they just impart them quality training so that with the training they can develop themselves as an as, 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 as a skilled employee of the organizations different organizations have got different ways of training their employees but training is more important in case of service sector because personally this particular sector which needs more human efforts more uh, kind of uh, human contribution so this is a sector where people will be directly communicating with the customers so they should have all the skills equipped with so that they can contribute immensely to the organization next is appraisal how exactly will evaluate the employees whatever tasks have been given to them have they completed the task or what is their approach how exactly an organization is going to assess the performance of the organization i mean of the employees there are different ways of doing this some of the organizations they follow 360 degree approach that means they take the uh, uh, they, they collect the assessment from various groups of and various groups of employees starting from peer group uh, subordinates uh, superiors and from the person itself so they try to apprise or they try to assess the actual performance of the individual and at the same time what are the avenues uh, in which the individual employee can improve upon next is rewarding quality we have seen this i was talking about the retention of the employees along with many other factors employees can be retained by rewarding proportionately there should be a new mechanism of rewarding the employees for example payment systems promotion other fringe benefits which moves with the uh, quality of goals being achieved by the 
individual employees and this rewarding qualities is in a true sense is a real contributor to retaining employees in an organization that means employees efforts employees endeavors are being recognized by the organization that's what most of the employees they want today next is job security along with the rewarding quality job security is another factor which makes employee to give his or her maximum commitment to the organization or to improve their superior performance organization should make their employees very much comfortable with the job and uh, give promise that there is a 100% job security so then the organ the, the, the particular individual or that particular employee can work in an environment of utmost relax relaxation and uh, utmost promise and the last one is employee involvement and employee relations as a manager if i want the best of my employees it's very important that i should involve my employee in every actions and activities i should empower my employees i should create some kind of autonomy for the for for, for the employees so that he can feel at home so that he can feel that he is being taken into confidence so these are the certain hr practices which help the organization to achieve high quality service now while uh, going to some other important uh, issues of the uh, of the of, of the uh, human resource management in an organization we can see that when we try to try try to get the best people from the market some of the issues which we basically face first that the pay structure then the culture of the working culture of the organization these are the issues which as a manager we have to or one has to deal with now what are the most effective hrm practices that are being followed in an organization let us just take a case of this or what what could be the best practices for an uh, for talent management to uh, to enforce customer centric uh, culture and to improve the customer services now many organizations today they have their own way of creating internal internal talent pools that means many of the organization instead of looking outside organizations to hire people with a specific set of skills what they do they basically groom their employees or existing employees of the organizations and try to prepare them to assume any kind of leadership role in the future this not only creates confidence among the employees but also makes the employee to look at future prospect within the organizations number 2 developing collaboration by eliminating information silos now information silos hinder information flows among the different organizational levels and basically obstruct in the way of success so the the the, the part is this for uh, performance improvement or for uh, performance excellence it is very important that resources and knowledge and experiences should be readily able, available to the employees that means organization should play a proactive role in delivering the, uh, in the, the in the delivering the information to the right person at the right time so in this particular case it is very important that coordination and partnership should be the mantra next meaningful customer service values if we look at the motto mission and vision of the organizations we will find that different organizations have got different visions different purposes but talking about the service sectors their only motto should be revolving around the customers should be revolving around the kind of customer services should be revolving around customer centric culture so that's how once you can uh, create or once an organization can create a differentiated customer service and uh, meaningful customer services that will create a lot of buzz in the market and there is a shift if we look carefully we will find that the most of the service sector organizations today they have accepted this particular fact very well so that's why their their primary motto their foremost motto is to satisfy their customer customers and bring smile on their faces next is aligning corporate strategy with individual roles many of the employees when they join the organizations they are not very much clear about their roles what kind of roles 
they are supposed to play. Many employees they find a mismatch between between their uh, qualification and the roles they are supposed to play, and this creates some kind of dissatisfaction, disinterest among those employees, and they are motivated to leave the organization to join other organizations which can satisfy their need. So that's why it is very important that initially to start with goal alignment should be one of the most important management tasks that means the employees should be very much very much clear about their roles and those roles should be in line with the corporate strategy once this is done then definitely an organization can witness an improvement in the performance of the employees and at the same time increased commitment from the employees next is employee empowerment if we do not if an organization does not give any kind of autonomy or some kind of decision making decision making roles to the to its employees definitely that particular self control process that kind of, uh, that kind of confidence will not come in so it's very important that an employee should be made or should be made accountable should be made responsible to his or her task he sh or she should be answerable whatever she has done that means we here we are i am talking about employee empowerment now executing a enterprise wide transformation when we are talking about transformation of the organization it should start from the individual employee it should and the, the every part of the organization should go for some kind of transformation next is change should start at the top we are talking about leaders and the leaders should set the example they should lead by an example so when we are talking about change the along uh, all these employees be, uh, starting from the topmost they should feel the change they should support the change they should lead by an example they should try to convince other employees that that change is important change is inevitable so once they lead from the front other employees will definitely follow them next point is clearly communicating the message we have always seen that one of the major factors that creates some kind of uh, misinformation some kind of uh, mistrust among the employees is the lack of clear communication among the employees of different levels this should be avoided whatever messages they should be clear to each and every employee so that's why most many of the organization today in different countries they are following a flat organization structure where the communication barrier is minimum next is explaining how change affects employee individually once the organization once the change is set in into the organization it is very important that what kind of expectations organizations have from the employees during and after the change what what the employees need to perform they should be well communicated how they will be evaluated how they will be assessed everything should be clearly communicated after the changes so that employee should be well equipped with different parameters and last one involve every layer today organization they have understood that to perform the best and to achieve the organizational goals it is very important that every layer in the organization should have should be involved so in short we can say that many of the organization today are they are go for integration they perform as a unit so lastly uh, i would like to mention that when we're talking about or from this from our discussion we can make out that human resource management practices is a distinct and uh, integrated action and has a great impact on the future of the globalized tourism and hospitality industry also the hr practices of an organization should be well managed and should be should be should be clearly spelled out and should be properly implemented in order to succeed and survive in this dynamic globalized market so i hope this particular session will help you to learn a bit thank you very much